big things are happening around the Great Lakes. The biggest funding initiative ever is helping to clean them up. And they need it. They're the largest freshwater system in the world. They provide 35 million people with drinking water, world-class recreation, 1.5 million jobs, and 62 billion in wages. And the Great Lakes are the heart of the economy in the upper Midwest. And there's a reason that heavy industry located here. It was the water. There's a reason why we have electrical power plants here. It's because of the water. You know, we have fishing. We have a, a great tourism industry. It's because of the water. But the Great Lakes are suffering from decades of contamination and environmental degradation. In the past, the heartland of the United States was an industrial heartland. And uh, because of access to the water, both for use in manufacturing and for shipping, many of those industries located right on the shores of the Great Lakes. Many of these industries discharged heavy metals, oil, and chemicals like PCBs and PAHs into the rivers and harbors. Rick Fulmer lives on the Sheboygan River in Wisconsin. Pollution was very, very bad. It's a river that I would have never swam in. I'd never eat fish out of here. We had a lot of foundries and factories on this lake. It was critical for the economy of Muskegon, but now we're paying the price. After these factories are no longer here, those pollutants, those legacies remain in our system and they prevent us from fully utilizing Muskegon Lake for all of the benefits that it can achieve. It was total waste of nature. Several decades ago, the loss of such benefits in 43 places around the Great Lakes led the governments of the U.S. and Canada to designate them Areas of Concern, or AOCs. The contamination in these AOCs prevents people from using these areas to their full benefit. These problems are known as beneficial use impairments. Contaminated sediment impairs many uses of rivers and harbors. It harms fish and wildlife and makes some fish unsafe to eat. It also restricts local communities from performing routine dredging for navigation. These impairments create a stigma for the community, and that diminishes the economy of these towns, cutting into tourism, property values, and the general quality of life. That's why the President and Congress decided to act. A $1 billion federal investment in the Great Lakes is helping to revitalize these economies, deepening rivers, bringing back healthy fish, boosting tourism, and restoring other beneficial uses. Part of that investment is a program called the Great Lakes Legacy Act. Mark Tuckman is the program manager for the Great Lakes Legacy Act. So the Great Lakes Legacy Act is a program specifically designed to address contaminated sediment issues in the Great Lakes. The Act funds sediment cleanups at areas of concern. It's administered through the EPA's Great Lakes National Program Office. To date, the, the Great Lakes Legacy Program has completed 13 sediment remediation projects around the Great Lakes. We've remediated, either removed or capped, over 2.1 million cubic yards of contaminated sediment. That's equivalent to 200,000 dump trucks full of contaminated sediment. The Legacy Act is a voluntary, collaborative program. The EPA works with organizations like state and local governments, nonprofits, and industries, which volunteer matching funds to support the cleanup work. Partnerships and community involvement are the key to the Legacy Act's success. Ultimately, this is a community-owned lake, it's a community-owned project, and we need to have the community involved so they recognize that kind of ownership. Representatives from the EPA and the city of Sheboygan, Wisconsin, speak to the importance of collaborating with partners and the community. The Sheboygan River project was completed in 2012. Working with the city, the county, and the Wisconsin DNR, as well as the responsible parties, Pollution Risk Services, and Wisconsin Public Service, we've all planned this project together. 
We always looked at it as if we were sitting on the background and just letting this happen and not being an active partner in it. You know, that's kind of the work we're going to get. Whereas if there's something that really isn't right, then you can bring it to the table and you need to be at the table for all those discussions. In 2006, 90,000 cubic yards of sediment were removed from Rudiman Creek in a residential neighborhood of Muskegon, Michigan. Teresa Barnhart chaired the task force that led the project. We found that we were able to create a difference and make a change simply because everyone owned the project. It wasn't just state and federal governments coming in and doing our work for us. Working together, local organizations, municipalities, and state government agencies are making a difference around the Great Lakes. But these cleanups can entail a few short-term inconveniences. They're like a construction project on the water. There may be increased truck and water traffic, noise, and bright lights. But these inconveniences pass very quickly relative to the long-term benefits of clean rivers, healthy wildlife, and increased tourism. The Brookings Institution found that restoring the Great Lakes and cleaning up sediment um, throughout all of the areas of concern, all of these places that have been negatively impacted, will result in at least $50 billion in restored value to the Great Lakes. Areas of concern that have completed legacy projects are already realizing these benefits. Milwaukee's Kinnick River is one of them. Businesses have been thriving since 2009 when a Legacy Act project removed 160,000 cubic yards of contamination from the river. What it has done is it's made what was turning into a, a business that wasn't going to be viable a whole lot longer into a viable business again. Horny Goat alone has added 200 jobs into the community. We have probably 20 to 70 boats on a given Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. Uh, and people have enjoyed this part of the river for the, probably the first time in 20 years. The aesthetics and clean up the property are good for employees. They're good for our customers that visit. They like to see, you know, a, the clean river versus the bad river. So now it can be used. Now we regularly see people go by in kayaks and canoes where, you know, never ever would have seen that before. The community of Muskegon, Michigan is enjoying similar benefits. You know, we're getting more tourism, we're having more anglers, we're having people's property values increase. Um, projections are that we're going to have more tax uh, uh, base for the city of Muskegon. Um, a six to one return on this investment. So we bring kids now down here for laboratory type settings, an outdoor lab if you will, and they study for the entire day the wildlife that you see before you. Work performed through the Great Lakes Legacy Act also improves a community's natural surroundings. Almost a million cubic yards of pollution have been cleaned up from the Grand Calumet River in an industrial part of northwest Indiana. For a hundred years, the river was a dumping ground for industrial waste. Now that's changed. We dredged it, we capped it, and we created some areas for fish spawning, and we are revegetating, and hopefully it will become the migratory bird stopover that it once was, so. We actually have the opportunity to have uh, about a 300 acre nature preserve with a clean Grand Calumet River flowing through that. And if you'd have told me that that was gonna happen 20 years ago, I would have never believed it. Perhaps you thought a sediment cleanup could never happen in your community. With the Great Lakes Legacy Act and your help, it can. Take the first step. Go to our website, our Great Lakes Legacy Act website. Look at some of the contact info on there and give our office a call and just express your concerns. We then can direct you to folks in your area of concern that can help you and you can work together with those people to bring a project proposal to our attention. The lakes can, once again, be great. The Great Lakes Legacy Act is getting us there. But it is a partnership program. Contact the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency and find out how you can help.
we're thinking about our future, our children and our grandchildren and what they will be able to enjoy in this beautiful place that we call our home. We planted it from the sea.